But what's the first lesson? Romans 8, I mean, excuse me, Revelation 8, 1 and 2. What does that say? When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for a half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given the trumpets. Now we're back at this throne scene. There are seven angels that always stand before God. They're each given a trumpet. They're each going to step forward. They're each going to sound. These horrors are going to unfold. But before all that, what happens? Silence. Silence. Lesson one, God waits. Unlike us, God is patient. Before the judgment actually starts, in Revelation 8 and verse 7, God waits a long time. We're a people of action. Waiting is hard for us. But God says the greatest action we can perform is being still before him. And what? What's going in this bowl? Praying. The silence of God reminds us that God waits. Why is he waiting? He's giving time for all of these evangelists to do their work. He's given time for the greatest revival in history. He's given time for the Savior's special forces to, to share the gospel. He's waiting. Wow. Look at verse 3. Second point, God waits, time to repent. God listens, time to pray. Wow. It, God himself is collecting our prayers. He has a bowl in front of him right now. Have you put anything in your bowl today? The scriptures say, pray without what? Ceasing. Are you praying all the time? Do you pray to start your day? Do you pray the Lord would open his word to you? Do you pray that you'd have boldness? Do you pray that you resist sin? Do you pray that, that you just want to give something precious to the Lord? When my children were little, they used to come up to me. I, I even have some of them right here in my Bible, just little notes and cards. I collected everything they made for me. If, if they drew a picture for me, I saved it. It was so special. I'm an earthly father, a fallen father. I'm the, the, the most sinful person I know personally up close because I know myself. If I collect my kid's stuff, can you imagine how much God the Father wants to collect your prayers? God listens, time to pray. Prayer to God is a sweet smelling sacrifice. When I pray, it rises up before his throne from me on earth, and it's so precious. God hears it. The Holy Spirit, Romans 8 says, uh, makes intercession for us, tells God the Father. The, the Spirit tells the Father the intercession we need, and God collects it right there. But now look at verse 6. God responds. The God who waited, time to repent. The God who listens, time to pray is the God who responds, and it's time to flee. What do we have to flee from? Look at the next slide. There are solar instabilities ahead. With that fourth trumpet by verse 12, we find the Lord saying the sun will be darkened. The earth will become scorched, and yet the sun will get darker. What this could be is, and we know it scientifically, is, is what you see on the screen. Solar flares come from dark sunspots. And when those solar eruptions take off toward the earth, they are so powerful. Now you can look up, look in Google under Carrington event. In 1858, a solar flare so big came toward the earth that it caused the telegraph lines, the, the metal lines between wooden poles that were strung across America, it caused the poles to start on fire because the wires conducted so much of the, the radiation that came from the sun. It was, it, Carrington event was a disaster for the earth. And, and that is probably what it's talking about. Um, on May 15th, we had the highest magnitude G5 solar storm. It's kind of like an F5 tornado. And God says that's coming so much that Revelation 16, 8 and 9 says that the sun is going to scorch people. So solar instabilities are ahead. Here's another thing that it, that it says. Um, it also says that in chapter 8, that the heavens, verse 12, were going to be struck. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, 
a third of them were darkened, and it talks about this kind of cosmic earthquake. Well, look on the screen. Did you know that now that our telescopes are getting better and better, in the last 20 or 30 years, amateurs have been detecting that gigantic, kind of like extinction level event rocks are whizzing by the Earth all the time. And some of them actually, look at this, here's the moon, here's the Earth, these near Earth objects whiz between the Earth and the moon. It's only 240,000 miles here. And some of these space rocks, asteroids, they're called NEOs, near Earth objects, whiz around. But Matthew 24, 29, you can see it on the screen there. Immediately after those days, the sun will be darkened. I just read that in Revelation 8. The moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. And listen, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. On the right side of that slide, asteroid Florence. NASA map shows the largest near-Earth object ever approaching tonight. Now that was last year. But guess what? During the tribulation, they don't whiz by. There are going to be hits, strikes, near-Earth objects. That's what we already saw in chapter 6. Basically, the Lord says this, the heavens will shake. Luke 21, 11 tells us that there will be great earthquakes in various places, famines, pestilences, fearful sights, great signs from heaven. Not only will the sun be darkened and the moon and the stars, but the powers of heaven will be shaken. Why? You remember, we already learned this. Why? Because God wants to remind us life is fragile. God wants to remind us death is inevitable. And that's why, look at the next one, Christ is the answer. And that's what we opened with. God sends the 144,000 evangelists because God wants us to know that he is going to precipitate the greatest revival in history. Before he pours out his intense wrath, he deploys those who point to Christ. Did you know the tribulation has not started? COVID-19 is not part of the tribulation, but it's a reminder. Our lives are fragile. Death is inevitable. Christ is the answer. And we're engaged to Jesus Christ. Now, why today would one of you that's attending, just joining us because you found it on YouTube, or maybe you're enrolled in a class and you're actually taking this course, and you're in your 13th lesson, and yet you're finding it hard to read the whole book of Revelation. You're finding it hard to do those, those devotional studies, those of you for credit, it's 60% of your course, you know, the summary and the lessons and the prayer of application. You don't, you don't want to do that. Why would you not want to do it? Because you're grieving the Spirit. Got a lot of free time during sheltering. Is the flesh dominating or the spirit? I showed you the test. Go back. You can stop this video and back up and look at that slide. The Holy Spirit, when we were saved, he sealed us. He secures us by giving us the down payment. Him moving inside is the down payment. We're engaged to Jesus Christ. He wants to make us useful. How do we get useful? Why don't you take a minute during this closing prayer and remember that God the Savior has you as a special forces person. You're one of his soldiers. Paul said, we endure hardness as a good soldier. Why not take this closing prayer as a time to surrender again to the Holy Spirit?